So if you're watching this video, you've probably just started fly fishing or you're thinking about taking it up and you want to know how to fast track your learning and be better at fly fishing as quick as possible. So in today's video, I'm going to be sharing the lessons I learned and the mistakes I made in nearly 20 years of fly fishing. Oh, first spot, I can already see some good fish lurking. Better start rigging up. Okay, so while I rig up, let's consider lesson number one. Fly fishing is not easy and you will learn a heap by fishing with someone that really knows what they're doing. Now there's a number of ways to go about this. Firstly, if you have the money, you can hire a guide. Guides are there not only to get people to catch fish, but also teach people. You can really learn a heap from a guide. So if you can't afford a guide, hopefully you have a buddy that's a great fly fisherman. Probably the person that got you into the fly fishing in the first place. If that's the case, you'll learn a heap from them. Fish with them as much as you can and don't just fish, watch them, learn and let them teach you what they know. It's a surefire way to fast track your learning and uh, quite enjoyable as well. If you don't have a buddy to learn from or your buddy's just starting out with you as well, the best option is joining a fly fishing club. Fly fishing clubs are a fantastic place to meet people that are like-minded and to also find people that are willing to teach you. A lot of people at clubs are very happy to teach you how to fly fish and have a lot of knowledge to share. Make sure you hang out with the people in the club that fish regularly and are good and consistently catching fish. And go on club trips, they're fun, you get to know new spots and you need to learn the techniques and things. So yeah, definitely consider joining a club. The crux of lesson number one is don't try to learn just on your own. You'll be much better off getting some experts to teach you. Whether it be a guide or the club, just make sure you get the advice you need. YouTube is a great place to learn things as well, but seeing it practically on the water and have people show you the real thing, there's just no substitute for that. Plus, you get to fish as well. There's a couple of fish there. Try them. If you're ever wondering what you should be learning first, it's to cast. Casting is arguably the thing that will make the biggest difference to your fishing altogether. Let's quickly try and catch these fish with an accurate cast. Let's see if we can get that one. It's chasing the fly. Oh, it looked, but it didn't take it. Try the other one. See, not an accurate cast. Stuck it in the bushes. Try again. Casting will surely save you a lot of frustration. It will keep your flies out of the bushes. It will keep the flies out of your ears. And it will make the biggest difference to your fishing. There's just no doubt about it. Oh, there we go. Tangled in the bushes, perfect example. Practice my casting. See, had I been a better caster, I would have probably caught one of those fish with the first cast. But I messed it up. Even if you think you're the best, you can always learn to do it better. And as a beginner, casting is going to be the difference between you catching your first fish and not catching anything. Oh, I should have been catching one of these right now. And casting, has determin casting determines more than just how far you cast or accuracy or distance. Casting has a big impact on the way your fly lands, your presentation, and the drift it gets. You can control your line in the air to get better drift. It just makes a world of difference to your fly fishing. I can't stress enough how important fly, fly casting and being a good caster is going to be in your fly fishing journey. Oh, I really should have caught one here. I messed up big time with those first fish. So while I do another fly change, let's talk about lesson number three. Line control. What you do with your line determines what your fly does. It could be anything from stripping it in to give the fly action to mending it on the water to get a drag free drift. Those are the things that make the biggest difference in whether the fish will take your fly or not. Not always just the type of fly. Going for a rubber leg thingy. See if that can get them to 
to be interested and also it's heavier so sometimes it's the depth line control takes practice and skill and reading the water knowing when to do stuff and knowing when to do nothing and understanding what it is you need to achieve in this case I want a drag free drift and I'm trying to get the fly to sink and go as naturally as possible without drag in front of the fish now what I'm doing here is lifting the extra line off the water so that the current doesn't keep, cause drag I'm soon going to have to move on because I'm not having... Oh, there we go! Got deeper, got drag free, got a fish. There we go, that's exactly what I wanted. So, the rubber leg fly, probably the most likely thing was the depth. That was making the difference. Nice rainbow trout, it's going crazy and spooking every fish in the pool. But we've got a fish on board. Woo, it's going nuts and it is now fouled itself around the line so what we need to do is get that oh it's back it's free but it's gone into the sticks got to get that net out quickly oh got to get the net got to get the net oh. and this is all these snags and good sized fish that's why I fish, I'm fishing with 2x Okay. So this is what happens when it all comes together. A nice rainbow trout. Nice good condition. Nice and silvery. That's what we want. Let's get that one away. Very cool. Right, let's continue. Oh, there's some good fish in front of me here. Looks like a big brown. I'm fishing with a new rod today. It's a four weight, four piece nano. For my love fly fishing now it's literally the first time i fished with it today so very light and very sensitive and i have to get used to casting it anyway let's get back to the big brown in front of me here that is a shockingly terrible cast it's not even in the water <laughs> but okay let's try again that's slightly better i think i've got a little bit too long leader on here to be honest and the other thing i forgot to do is put floatant on my dry so while i shorten the rig and sort out the dry fly let's talk about lesson number three now lesson number three is copy and don't be afraid to copy make sure that when you're on the water and you see someone having success copy what they do Ask them why it's working. What is it they're doing that you aren't doing that is getting them fish? You often find that even strangers will happily share with you on the water their tips and even their secrets to success. What you don't want to do is persisting with things that aren't working. Doing your own thing and sticking with your guns. Unless you really know that's the right thing and that's what's going to work, don't do that. If there's someone else catching fish and they're going so consistently, make sure it's not a fluke then figure out what it is they're doing and learn from them. Fly fishing is about learning and you'll never know everything. So make sure you keep learning, keep finding out what those new techniques are, new flies, new methods, how it is to mend, what it is. Just keep learning and keep at it and don't be afraid to copy things that are successful. These fish are remarkably fussy today. All right, well, I've decided to leave those fish alone. I'm not in a hundred fly change mood today, so gonna move on to the little pull ahead here see if I can pull something out now when you start off fly fishing you are always going to wonder about gear what rod should I buy is the first thing you always see it on the forums what is the best rod and I want something that can do everything most versatile rod what weight what this what that what brand let me tell you now there is no magical do-it-all rod there are some versatile things but depending on what you do you're going to need a different rod okay yes some rods are quite versatile 
a five weight is a good weight in general for trout but it's not going to cover every species it's not going to cover every situation what you need to do is look at where you're going to locally fish where are you going to fish most what are you going to fish for most and narrow it down to that because your first rod should be the one you're going to use all the time that you're going to fish with all the time there's no point getting a specialized rod for bonefish if you're going to be fishing for trout just because you have one bonefish trip coming up better of borrowing something make sure you get the right rod that you're going to fish with all the time and that works for the locations you're going to fish in and the style of fishing you're going to do fly fishing this there's so many different styles and kinds of fly fishing you can do euro nymphing swinging trout spay casting streamers dry fly fishing dry fly nymph dry dropper it's just endless possibilities and the, every rod doesn't suit you just can't do everything with one rod and you'll inevitably if you end up fly fishing long enough end up with a whole array of rods to do the things you want to do I'm not even going to start getting into brands or weights or fast action or me it's just a minefield as a beginner you need an entry level rod that's going to suit the style of fishing and the places you are going to be fishing and that you can only figure out by talking to people that fish the areas and people that know what to use go to expert fishermen speak to your local tackle shops as well but also make sure you get independent advice from expert fishermen just make sure you get something that you're comfortable with you can afford and that's going to do what you need it to do you can spend as much or as little as you want in general these days there's not a lot of bad rods around you can really do well with any price range you want it's more about the fact that you need to be comfortable and happy fishing with what you have and to be honest the rod is not the most critical part of your fly fishing rig as you see here today I've just picked up a rod that I've never fished with to before and I'm getting used to it and I'll catch fish with it this happens to be a high quality more expensive rod but I could come here and fish with a cheaper rod as well and I'll also catch fish the rod will more determine how comfortable you are casting how easy it is to cast and how it handles fish but your skill with the rod and the line will play a much bigger role in successfully catching fish than the rod itself will people's views on that might differ <laughs> and you're happy to slam me in the comments if you think the rod is a critical essential part but um, yeah I have fished with many different kinds of rods of different variant qualities and speeds and actions and I have caught fish with all of them the main difference for me was that some rods I like to fish with more than others and it makes it more pleasant things that can make a big difference is how light the rod is and how easy it is to cast can uh, make a day's fishing a lot more pleasant than a older heavier rod in the same weight class that can be a pain to cast all day really a pain in fact hurting you or injuring you and the benefit of some of the modern technology is that the rods become very light but extremely powerful and efficient so they can achieve things that previously the technology just couldn't achieve in the same light rods so it's worth looking at something a bit more modern but if you find a good deal second hand on a great rod, old rod as well it's definitely an option Need to change flies, I'm not getting down deep enough. 
Okay, so I want to use a lighter fly. So I've gone for even long and dropper, but I've also had to drop down the thickness of my dropper because two X is just not going to get my fly down if I'm using a lighter fly. I need to have a thinner tippet to cut through the water quicker if I'm using a lighter fly. I'm just trying a bit of a orange hot spot nymph. Come out for the dry. We took the dry. That is really unexpected. As soon as the sun came up, you could see the dry and this is a really slabby, poorly conditioned fish. I will just grab it in the net quickly. Cool that it took the dry though, but I'll get this out quickly. That's a poor condition slabby fish. I'll show you that quickly and get him out of the net. Okay, because this fish is in poor condition, I'm not even gonna I try not even touch it. It came in really quick. Okay, then I'm just gonna let it swim out of the net. And there we go. Cool take on the dry, I hope you could see that clearly. Unexpected, but okay. Well, I want to have a few more casts in here. So I'm just going to do that and see if I can get another one. But this brings me to the next tip, fly lines. So while I don't consider the rod that super essential, it has to be matched with a fly line. Doesn't matter what kind of fly fishing you're doing, well, except maybe you're on a thing where the fly line is more of a token. Let's not talk about that. Um, fly fishing is based on casting with the weight of the line. That's why you have a fly line. So it makes a huge difference in how you cast and how easy it is to cast, how successful you cast, how the rod loads. You really need to make sure you get a fly line that matches the rod that you're going to be using. And also not just matches the rod, but matches the kind of fishing you're going to be doing. If you're going to be dry fly only and you want to go for perfect, delicate presentations, you need a specific kind of fly line to do that. If you're going to be casting big streamers that are heavy, that you need to turn over, you need a different kind of fly line that can turn over those big flies easily. If you're going to be fighting tight streams versus fishing big open rivers, then you get into all the trout spay stuff, which is completely different sort of things. Skagit and Scandi and all those sort of lines and lake fishing and saltwater fly fishing. Everything the line is super important. It has to match what you're going to be doing and it has to be a good quality line that's going to last you a while and is going to keep performing. It isn't going to crack and isn't going to it isn't going to crack and isn't going to have a huge amount of memory so you end up struggling it's going to keep floating so you can mend if you have a floating line and isn't going to break as a good core strength, whatever str strength you need, especially if you're saltwater fly fishing. Really, again, requires a lot of research, requires thinking about what you're going to be doing and you will own multiple fly lines. There's no doubt about it. As you will eventually own multiple rods, you'll own multiple fly lines eventually. A very important aspect is to make sure that the first fly line you get suits the majority of fishing you're going to be doing with that rod that you're going to be doing the majority of your fishing with. And that way you'll combine those and you'll learn how they work and then from there you can build your, all your outfits out. Doesn't look like I'm going to get another one here. Oh, if you've made it to here you probably enjoy this video. And if you do enjoy this video and want me to make more of this style of videos, just drop me a comment and give us a like button. That will give me an indication of what 
you want and if you enjoy this content and you want me to make more. Now, if you don't like this video, hit the dislike button twice and then leave me a comment as to why. I'm always trying to improve my content, so I'll try and fix it in the next one. Let's get on to some more fishing and some more tips. Oh, just look at those suckers there. That's a couple of big brownies. So while I sneak up onto these browns, let's get on to the next tip. And this one you're going to like. It's practice. What does practice mean? You've got to go fishing. In order to learn how to fly fish, it might seem obvious, but yeah, you've got to go fishing. And the more you fish, the more, the better you'll get, and the more fish you'll catch. And an important way to do that is to start fishing a body of water that you can get familiar with. Don't go all over the place and fish different water every time. Find somewhere that you can fish regularly and that you can get to know. You can practice your casting, you can get to know the water, you know there's fish, and you start catching stuff. But you won't learn by going to a new spot every time. Man, I'm in trouble with the wind here. That's reasonable. So find a place you like to fish. Salt water, fresh water, whatever it is you're going to be doing, and fish it. Get to know it. Because a lot of the important things you're going to learn, you're going to learn on the water. And to be really good at fishing a piece of water, you really need to get to know it. Each day on the stream or river or on the ocean is different. Tides matter, seasons matter, time of day matters. It all affects what the fish do, how they behave, what they eat. And it's just no substitute for time on the water to get that experience and to learn it. But if you keep going to a new place every time, you just won't get to learn it. That's a snag. I know now where that snag is, and that's just probably spooked the whole pool. So, there we go. Lesson learned. There's a snag there. You don't cast in that spot. You're going to lose your flies, which I did. So very important. Practice, practice, and practice. The more you practice, the more you practice, the better you'll get at it. And I can see plenty of fish in the tail, which is where they normally lie here. I start with those on the inside edge. That can be a reasonable cast, no weird drift. But it didn't matter, I got the fish anyway. I'm going to bring him straight back out this way. Yes, and you whoa, are jumping like a mad fish. You are a mad fish. I'm going to. T <laughs> that is quite possibly the most air I've seen on a fish in a while. Okay, but I want to land this fish quickly. He's a little bit, a little bit fresh still, but I'm keen to find him pretty quickly. I want to get another one out of this pool. There we go. Gotcha. Nice. Very nice. Not a big fish, but much better condition than the previous one. Nice. Careful approach to the pool. There's another tip for you. Approach it carefully. There it goes. It doesn't matter what you're fishing for, you must approach your water carefully. Fish can be very sensitive sometimes, and that little bit of a careful approach can make all the difference sometimes. There's a bunch of fish sitting in the tail here, but I can't imagine catching them. How in the world did I catch that fish? No idea, but that one... No idea I caught that one. Not the brightest fish in the pool, thankfully. Seems like a reasonable rainbow. Now, sometimes you get lucky. And I'd say that was one of those days. Uh, the way I spooked this pool... Didn't approach it well, messed about. And then sometimes just hook a fish, even though you really shouldn't. It's a nice rainbow too. 
quite happy with that. Quite happy with that. Come on, fishy. Oh, really beans. I hope it's supposed to do that. <laughs> Special nano technology in this nano. It's a bit long there. That's not going to work. Come back up. Come back up. Come back up. No, no, no. no. Don't behave like that. Come back up. It really has a bit of a bend in it. It's amazing. So, nano technology. I need to actually read up on what it is. It's a new, new rod that I've never fished off before for my life fly fishing. Then the nano four weight. Oh, very cool. That's a nice fish. I might even have to weigh that one. Well, I think this one is the best fish for the day. I wouldn't say deserved, but pretty nice. It's probably about a three pound rainbow. Right around. Some clear water running over it. There we go. Nice. Congratulations, you made it through my ramblings. That probably means you like this video, so why not watch another one up there or up there? And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks very much for watching.